Hello there guys, Coaster Chow here, Dogster Born, Bob Bill for Theme Parks and welcome to a Theme Park Newsroom update. Now this is a massive discussion debate video. This is on the Chessington World Adventures Project Amazon. I think that's a very nice finessing way of saying it. <laughs> uh, now obviously Project Amazon, aka Amazon Land, which is a nice way of saying it, uh, is this brand new project for 2023 or 2024, depending when the planning process is accepted, if it is accepted. Uh, but this is overall a brand new area with a couple of children's rides, a couple of landscaping here and there, but the major thing is a brand new roller coaster. And from the design and from the rumours we've been hearing, it could be a wing coaster. Now we do have some new evidence via a ride Rater social media post from Ride Rater, uh, according to sources, and this is to discuss the manufacturer and the potential type of coast that it will be. Now, we're going to go through all the details of the report and then share my thoughts on it. So, before we get started, guys, please do the usual like, comment, subscribe, cut the case bell so you never miss another video. Also, guys, check the description down below for social media links, uh, Google Forms to submit your own video ideas. And also uh, go into the, uh, the description just to check out all the other stuff as well. TikTok's in there, Discord server's in there, do all the good stuff. And for now, guys, let's have a look at the report from Ride Rater, according to various sources through Ride Rater, uh, on what could be uh, the manufacturer of the, of the main coaster in the area. And also some rumours about who could be building what type. So according to Ride Rater, there are multiple manufacturers in the running. Now, Bulger and Mabiod are not the sole contender. Apparently, the park said in the consultation that Vacoma, Matt Wright, B&M, Guslora, and ART Engineering are all in the running, and that the train design, method of propulsion, as well as the inclusion of any inversions or steep banking, is up to the manufacturers to include in their design proposal. So the ride not may necessarily be launched or have any inversions, and it might not necessarily be a wing coaster. This is just an artistic design to show the overall area of the coaster. Now, the only thing they've decided is the basic layout itself, that it will be a boomerang-style roller coaster and have a 1.4 meter height restriction. Uh, so basically that's the only thing that's been decided. It's a boomerang style coaster or a shuttle coaster and it'll have a 1.4 meter height restriction. So that's the only two things really they decided. Uh, now someone in a forum, in the Coast Force forum, a guy called Matt, shout out to him, actually put some pros and cons for each manufacturer. So I'm going to have a look at his pros and cons. Again, shout out to Matt if you're watching this from the Coast Force forum. I'm going to shout, I'm going to go through his pros and cons, shout out the manufacturers and why the what he thinks the pros and cons are for each manufacturer and share my thoughts on his pros and cons and sort of sort of debate which manufacturer I think it will be or to debate a top two or three. So let's go through the pros and cons of each of the manufacturers right now. So first up, Vacoma. So in terms of going for a Vacoma, they have vast experience manufacturing shuttle coasters and they're arguably king of the shuttle coasters. Though it's now discontinued, the traditional boomerang was the most cloned roller coaster layout of all time, and even now the family boomerang seems to be flying off the shelves at a rate of knots. Now, as they seem fairly keen to innovate when required, working with Disney on numerous very unique attractions, and rides like Fly at Fantasia Land prove that Vacoma is not shy when it comes to inventing new ride concepts. So, you can imagine that the wackiness of this ride concept will be well within their capabilities. Now, even though Mellon has never built a Vacoma coaster in any of their parks, well, recently anyway, um, they've fairly recently done business with Vacoma through Legoland Division Haunted House Mont Par Monster Party at Legoland Windsor uh, with the fairly recent Vacoma installation. So Vacoma might have some kind of link uh, to Brogen, who are the manufacturer that builds the flying theatre models that currently seem to be springing up at Legoland Parks. Now, they're not a particularly expensive manufacturer either. Now, in terms of being against Vacoma, now, um, we're not sure how up for building the rumoured wing trains Vacoma would be. Now, of course, they're keen to innovate, but they've never done anything quite like a wing coaster before. And by nature, the wing trains might risk endangering Vacoma's reputation for building silky smooth coasters. Now, they also haven't built any thrill orientated shuttle coasters. And as much as they said about Merlin working with Vacoma before, they've never worked with Vacoma on a major bespoke thrill coaster before. And the new Vacoma is still slightly alien to the Western market at the moment. 
So Vekoma could have a good chance, but there's reasons to say against Vekoma. Next up, Mac Rice. Now, they've done a fair bit of work with the Legoland parks. Uh, they did help them out with the new Duplo Dino Coaster at Legoland Winter a bit. Uh, they've worked with the Matt Wild Mouse as well. Of course, Rattlesnake at Chessington is one of them. They've built launch shuttle-ish coasters like the Capital Bullet Train at Motion Gate Dubai and Star Trek at Movie Park Germany. Now, also, they've built thrill coasters. They don't tend to be too intense, so it could be brilliant for the family thrill demographic of Chessington World Adventures. Now, in terms of going against Matt Wrights, they are quite pricey. They're not stroke. Uh, stricken as the most innovative of manufacturers uh, in terms of different things. Of course, they've gone uh, more innovative in recent times with the inverted power coaster, but even that's just a variation on the inverted coaster. Similar to BM, max selling point comes down to reliable, comfortable luxury roller coasters. So we're not sure they see them plumping for something like a wing coaster or whatever seating gimmick Merlin seemingly wants from the ride. Now, there's rumours that Mac are reportedly not too fond of Merlin as a client and wouldn't be keen to work with them on a major bespoke project. As such, they're not sure whether this would harm the chances of Merlin picking them. Uh, now, leaning on from the above, Merlin have never worked on Mac on a major bespoke ride project, so it is obviously uh, a very interesting uh, verdict. So, it should be interesting with Mac Rides is the chosen manufacturer. Now, a Bulliger and Mabiar coaster would justify all of the 1.4 meter height restrictions, they've worked with Merlin, uh, Merlin and B&M can work together on innovative coasters before, they worked on the dive coaster firstly in 1998, the flying coaster firstly in 2002, and the wing coaster around 2011 first, so you know they are the kings of innovation, of classic innovation from the last couple of decades. And of course, the main argument for B&M is that they're the only manufacturer currently actively building wing coasters right now. So this gives them a fair shot. Now, of course, going against B&M, they are very pricey. They've never built a shuttle coaster, um, you know, before. Um, of course, you know, you do have the, the launch sequence on Thunderbird, uh, which is a B&M wing coaster at Holiday World. They have the, the, the launch sequence on that wing coaster. But... Uh, not a full launch coaster. It's, it's, a, it's a different type of launch coaster. Uh, it's not really a shuttle coaster as well. So, you know, it's a full circuit. Thunderbird's a full circuit launch coaster. So they've not really done a shuttle coaster before. So, obviously, it's a bit of a risk with B&M. However, if you take away the price and the uh, sort of, you know, the, the risks with that... I would say b and have a fairly good chance. Now, Merlin have worked with Gerslauer quite a few times before, and they're a fairly cheap manufacturer, and they've built a fair number of shuttle coasters, and as much as Gerslauer don't currently offer a wing coaster, they aren't scared of innovation either. Now, the main thing against Gerslauer, and it relates back to a certain incident six years ago, it was the Smiler incident, would Merlin work with Gerslauer again? I'm not too sure. So their verdict's out on that one. Finally, ART Engineering. They seem to be one of Merlin's, Merlin's staunchiest allies for recent projects, doing a lot of work for LEGO, also building the fairly recent Ghostbusters 5D at Heidi Park in Germany. Now, ART seem to have a fairly wide repertoire and don't seem afraid to work outside the box, even though they don't really offer any thrill coasters. Now, would they be willing to work on a major thrill coaster? I'm not too sure. Now, given the number of smaller parks work with them, I guess the ART aren't that expensive, which would suit the philosophy of low-cost ride hardware and big theming budget of Merlin Entertainment perfectly. So it should be interesting if ART are the most likely manufacturer. So let's go and decide my top two, or should I say my top three list of manufacturers that could work on the Chessington project. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen, thrill seeks of all ages. That is looking at each manufacturer. Shout out to Matt for putting his pros and cons of each, each of the five manufacturers in the forum. Uh, in there. Shout out to you. Credit goes to you for your for and against arguments. And I, I agree. And the reason why I read them out in this video is because I totally agree with each of the for and against arguments. And I wanted to say that publicly. Um, but taking into account Matt's for and against arguments, which I agree with all of them. What would be my top three list? Well, before we put them in order, let's just decide the top three in any order. So let's rule out the two that I think will be ruled out. The first one I'm going to rule out is Gus Lauer, because I think that the Smiler incident was just too much right now. I think it's way too soon, even now, six years later, to work with Gus Lauer, with Merlin Entertainment's relationship with Gus Lauer. And because Smiler had so many problems even before the incident, uh, six years ago, you know, there was, there was little incidents, kept getting delayed before it was officially open. It had little things here and there, uh, you know, on the way. 
And, you know, I think that the relationship needs to be built a little bit more over time in the next few years. So I think that that's a big major factor into why Gerstar is not on my top three. It, you never know, they might have gone past that incident by now in terms of the manufactured relationship with the client. But I feel like, you know, that's a major factor. So I think Gerstar is out of my top three. Uh, Mac Rise is the second one out of my top three. And I'm going to have people in the comments already going, No! Not Mac Rise out of the top three! Hear me out. They're really expensive, and, you know, they could do a family thrill coaster, yes, but I do feel like Matt Rides isn't the kind of relationship Merlin has right now. I don't feel like they've worked with them on recent projects, in my opinion, in terms of ma not just major coasters. Like, you know, they got a little bit involved with Dupo Dino Coaster at Lego Land Windsor a couple of years ago, but, I mean, major family thrill coasters. We're not talking kids' coasters. We're talking family thrill to extreme coasters. So, I feel like that relationship with Mac isn't there yet. It will be set in stone at some point in the future, but maybe not now. So, I think that Mac's out the running for me, and the fact they're expensive as well, in my opinion, just makes it even more unreal unrealistic for Mac Rides to do this project. Uh, so, that leaves Vacoma, Bulgar, and Mabiard, and ART Engineering. Now, in third place, I'm going to go with ART Engineering. And the reason why I've gone with ART is because, you know, they haven't really worked on a massive family thrill coaster or a thrill coaster. Um, so I don't think they'd be right for this project, even though they have a wonderful relationship with Merlin and the smaller parks outside of Merlin as well. Uh, they've got a re really good relationship with all their clients, you know, like any other manufacturer would have. And I think that overall, I think ART Engineering have got a decent shout here. So uh, I think I'm going to put them third. They're in my top three, so they're in with a realistic shout, but I think they're third in my list. Second place I'm going to give to Vacoma because I think that, uh, again, there isn't that sort of thrilling coaster and the, the reason why they haven't done a wing coaster before, so I don't think Vacoma would be up for that, even though they are very innovative with their silky smooth coasters uh, in recent years. So I think that Vacoma is second. They're still realistic, very realistic to do it, but it would be interesting to see if they did do it because I don't think they would do a wing, a wing coaster, which I think it will be. I think it will be a family wing coaster. And finally, first on my list is Bolliger and Mabillard. Yes, they are expensive. Yes, they've got a massive budget on their coasters. But they, they are the only active company to do a wing coaster right now. They, they're they not afraid to be innovative and do a shuttle coaster. They can do it. They can absolutely do it. And I've got confidence they can do it. So I'm going with Bolliger and Mabillard. What do you guys think? Comment down below your predictions. But for now, guys, thank you very, very much for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, my name is Coach Shell. Keep living the coast life. I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a chessing, fantastic day.